Hey. Hello, guys. Welcome. Um, so, oops, I forgot to print my slides. Hang on a second. Thanks for coming. Just come in, there's plenty of room. <laughs> Grab a seat. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, I all think um, we've probably been this guy um, a couple of times in our lives. I know I, I have. Um, so maybe uh, maybe we are looking at it wrong. Maybe uh, maybe uh, the the printer is actually not the, the culprit here. Maybe uh, maybe it's just having fun. So maybe the paper is just bored and, and being inside the printer and, and just having a jam session. You never know. But. In all seriousness, um, print errors is nothing new. It's, it's been around for a while. This is uh, an 18th century um, newspaper called Herbal, the Herbal or something like that. Um, and the, the back side of this page is, is actually smooth printed, everything is fine, but there's a crease here on the front side when it went through the printer. Um, and when you, uh, when you drag it out, you can see that the printer was, was folded when it went through the printer. Um, so this is nothing new. Um, but this is probably my favorite of all printer errors. Like, what does that even mean, right? Um, and I, I don't have time to go into what it means now, but there is, there is a story behind that. You can catch me after if you want to know. Um, so, so why printers? Why am I talking about printers and printer errors? Um, so to, to answer that, I have to go back and just tell a little story. It all started with AirPlay. Um, AirPlay, I was working on, on implementing AirPlay in Node about a year ago, and through that work, uh, you know, when you have your phone and you say you want to send something to your Apple TV or you want to play music on your Airport Express, it automatically just pops up and it just works, and you don't like tell the IP address of the Apple TV or stuff like that. It just works, uh, and it's using something called Bungshur, or actually that's just Apple's branding of the protocol called ZeroConf, and Behind the scenes, ZeroConf is heavily using multicast DNS to broadcast on your local network to let everybody on the local network know, hey, here I am, I'm this service, I'm an Apple TV, uh, this is my name, this is my IP, you can connect to me on this port, and I have these uh, subset of features. And through my work on that, I uh, stumbled upon this standard called DNS Service Discovery. And Service Discovery, or DNS SD, is an RC, um, and I found out there was like a whole list of of services that you could advertise yourself at, as um, so, as uh, in the in the service discovery standard, you basically say, okay, I'm this kind of service. For example, I'm an Apple TV. Um, this is my name. I'm called Living Room or something, um, and I'm running on this IP and this port, and these are my my metadata configuration options. So I went through this list uh, after working with with uh, AirPlay, and I scrolled down to to stuff with I. And I was like looking at through it and see what interesting stuff there was, and I saw this thing called IPP, Internet Printing Protocol. And I was like, that's weird because normally printers is like something with drivers. Somebody said drivers before, I think. And ZeroConf, the premise of that is like you don't need drivers. That's the whole point. You don't need to configure anything. So I was like, this, like this, this is not how I usually think about printers. So I, I thought, okay, let, let, let's try and advertise a printer on the network using the same technique as I'm doing with AirPlay and see what happens. So I, I advertised a, a printer. I went into system preferences, into printers, and uh, lo and behold, there was a printer. Uh, I gave it a name called JavaScript World Domination, and it was there. <laughs> uh, and I installed it, um, and it installed. And I was like, okay, this is, this is crazy. Um, so 
I looked into the standard, and it turns out that IPP is just running on top of HTTP. So a printing client that talks IPP to a printer server that is IPP um, basically just talks HTTP for, for transport. So it looks something like this. You have a simple post request. Um, and you see the content type is application IPP. Um, and that's it. And then the body after that will be the actual IPP data. And that is a, that is a protocol that is binary and has nothing to do with HTTP, uh, but it's just using HTTP as a, as a transport. Um, and the IPP protocol basically just says, OK, there is a list of operations um, that you can, you can ask the printer about. You can ask to get uh, like the printer attributes, like how many how much toner is there left? Uh, you can get the list of jobs that is on the printer. You can send a job, obviously, to the printer, et cetera. And each of, each of these uh, uh, operations have a binary code that you'll find in the th third and the fourth byte of, of the body. Uh, so you can know as a printer like what operation is the, the client trying to, to send to me. Um, and just to quickly break this down, uh, basically, you have uh, the first two bytes, that's the version. This is version 1.1 of a, a body being sent to a printer. Uh, then you have the operation ID, as I talked about. This is operation 11, which is uh, get printer attributes. Uh, then there is a uh, request ID, and you have just have to echo that back to the, to the client. So you get a request, and you just echo the request ID back so it knows what you're responding to. Then there is a whole array of, a whole, whole set of, of uh, what's called attribute groups, which basically tells some, uh, tells the printer what the client wants to know. Um, and this is the, the, the operation attribute group. And it basically a set of key value pairs. So uh, you will have a, a name and a value. Um, oops. But you can also have like Booleans. You can have uh, arrays, uh, integers, et cetera. Um, and then finally, you get uh, to O3, which is the, the, delimit, the delimit attack for, for each type of attribute group. But O3 is a special one, which means uh, this is uh, the end of the attribute groups. And after that, you will have the body uh, of the document, the actual document you're trying to print, if you're printing a document. A lot of the operations that you saw before don't have actual bodies. Um, so there will be nothing there. So I implemented this in IPP encoder, which can encode and decode um, this stuff. This is a very, very low-level module for you to write your own client or your own server. Um, and it's very simple to use. I don't know if you can, if, if the font is okay here, but you require the module. Uh, in this case, this code is, is, is behaving as a server, but you could do the same thing for a client. Uh, you decode a buffer that you get in, a, just this binary body that you got. Um, and then you prepare a response based on that buffer, and the response is, is, is just a little bit nicer JSON structure as opposed to the binary stuff, uh, where you say, this is the status code that we want to give back to the client. Um, you echo back the request ID from, from the decoded, uh, the request ID from the decoded uh, body, and you give a little list of attribute groups back uh, as well uh, to the client. Uh, and each, each group uh, is basically a, an array of attributes. Uh, they can have different types, uh, integer, char set, uh, stuff like that. Uh, with a, a name and a value. Um, and then if you are a client, you will actually also give maybe a data, which is actually the, the document you're trying to print. And then you just encode it, and you get a buffer back, which is the response that, it, that is ready to be sent back to the printer. Uh, so I, 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 made, uh, I did that. I made a, a printer, um, and I implemented the bare minimum of operations you, are, you have to implement if you are a proper printer which is uh, the ability to print a job, validate a job, get printer attributes, uh, get the jobs that is on the printer, cancel a job, and get the job attributes. And that's called IPP printer. You can get that on NPM. And it's, uh, it works. You can, you can, um, you can use it uh, programmatically. So you can, you can require it. Uh, you give it a name. You, you didn't make a new instance of it. You give it a name, my printer. And then you just, it's an event emitter. You just listen for the job event. Uh, and then you get what, the first document is just a readable stream. And you can get the, the data for the job. So let's uh, actually see this in action. So let's see. Uh, actually, maybe I should, oh, maybe I should do like this. Hang on a second. Where's my mouse? It's there. There we go. Yeah. 
Can you guys see this? Okay, cool. So uh, if you can also use it as a CLI, so I installed it now, and I'm going to run it uh, with the debug flag on so you can see what's going on. Uh, and it's just called IPP printer, like this. And you can see it just says, okay, I'm listening, I'm, I'm alive. Um, so let's go into system preferences. Um, so let's go back from this stuff. Like this, yeah, and then into printers. And then install a new printer. And it's right there. Uh, oops, where's my, you can see it's right there, IPP printer. Thank you. Uh, and we click add, and we click OK. And now we have a printer. So uh, let's go and, and print something. So let's, where's, uh, this is the whole mirroring thing. Where's the, oops, there we go. Let's just print this page, this HTML page. So we print, uh, we can see it's, it's already selected, uh, the printer, and I click print, and it's printing, and let's go back to, to see what's going on here. Um, and here, a lot of requests are coming in, these are all the operations, and the actual job is being saved on disk in a PS file, which does a lot of operation where it's communicating back and forth uh, with the printer, trying to figure out is, are you out of toner? I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to ask the printer a couple of times. So you just have to respond to that. And let's try to open this. And it, of course, opens up on my other screen. Um, this is a really bad example to print. There's a lot of, oh, there. Oh. So that's, that's really, really simple. Um, and let's go back to the slides. So what can you do with this? I made something where I could print to my Kindle. So uh, you have this email address that you can actually email a PDF document to, and the Kindle will then put it on your, it will put it on your Kindle. Uh, so why not just print something, and it will automatically take that and send it to the Kindle. Um, I was thinking about doing something to print to bookkeeping, so every time I have a receipt, I can just print to the bookkeeping system. Oh, I don't know, you could print to tweet. <laughs> That'll be funny. Uh, the, my next project is going to be NCF uh, ACP, which is an acronym stands for an NSA CIA FBI auto censoring printer. <laughs> so you can do something like this totally automatically. Just swap out words. Uh, for, yeah, you, you can make some funny stuff. If, you, if you're suddenly a printer and you have a printer in Node, the, lim the limits are not existing, non-existing. So finally, I'm going to show you this thing uh, that I made uh, two days ago. It was called uh, Print Bin, which is a ripoff of all the, the DS bin, the HTML bin, and all that stuff. You can probably, you can probably guess what it does. Um, so let's close this guy down. Let's get the browser up. Let's look at. So, so this is print bin. So basically, print. I have mad CSS skills, by the way. <laughs> Just saying. Um, it's a public list of print jobs that anybody can print to this printer. It's on, it's on the internet. It hosted on on Heroku. Um, and here are all the print jobs. They're deleted after seven days. Um, you should be really careful what you click on here because people can send, send funky stuff. So let's, uh, let's go. So you, you, you go to uh, this repo here, and it basically just tells you to install Printbin uh, as a global module from NPM. Um, I already went ahead and did that. So, so if basically what you, so, so actually I wanna, let, let's just click on this. Let's just see. Let's see how this works. Um, so let's look at the source code for this because this is really, really interesting if you open up the index file. So this is basically the source code. It's not really doing anything except it's using my SiriConf module to basically advertise a TCP service um, of type IPP with the host IPP.printb.in 
on port 80 and give it the name print bin. It's not running a printer. It's just basically telling your local network, oh, there's a printer here on the local network. By the way, it's not on the local network. It's over here on Heroku. Um, so your system will just like accept that and say, okay, cool. Uh, on Windows, I don't think Windows supports a zero conf, so you probably have to actually point, uh, set up a printer and point to ipp.printb.in. But you get the point. So basically, if you write print bin, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> Thanks, Max. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I should probably get a, a better. Um, there was actually re resolution, uh, conflict resolution built into the protocol, which I haven't enabled that yet, so it will figure out a, a way to, to get a better name if, if, if the name is already taken. As you can see, the, the, the print bin name was already taken. So, but uh, thanks, Max. So, um, so basically, uh, now we can print something. So let's be like totally meta and then print this page. Um, whoops. My control thing is acting up. It's weird. So, oh, yeah, I didn't add the printer yet, of course. We need to add the printer, of course, first. So let's... I just realized I can see my slides down here, so I don't have to like do that all the time. This would be neat. So we select the print bin printer. We add it. This, I mean, it is, you only need to do this once. Um, and it will automatically figure out, even if the IP address changes, that it changed, as long as you just start the, the, the local uh, advertising uh, daemon. So now it's, it's there. Um, and there we have it. And now we click print, and it's printing. So now it's, it's uh, do, doing its thing uh, on Heroku. Um, let's, let's try to refresh. Oh, there's a, thanks, Max. Um, let's see if this is the top one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> should, 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 we, should we take a look at the cats? It's loading. PS is like a huge format. The other day, Max, he, he tried to, to, to make, make fun of me, and he printed the Bible to me. <laughs> That's a lot of pages. <laughs> That's a nice cat. That's a nice cat. Oh, sweet. Um, so he printed the Bible to me, and it was... Um, the HTML itself, it was just text. There was no images. It was not a scanned version of the Bible. It was just the raw text of the Bible. Um, that ended up being 600 and something megabytes uh, of PS, uh, PostScript data. It's huge. It's huge. So that's why it takes a little bit to download. So, so that's print bin. You can watch what you click on. You might see pictures of cats and other stuff. Yeah. That's, so where are they? There, where we go? OK, back. And that's my last slide. And you, you can see here um, all the modules that I went through, uh, zero conf, IPP encoder, IPP printer, and uh, also have something called print cat, by the way. That's an awesome module that lets you just print to standard out, which means you can use pipes, which are awesome, and then you can pipe your print job to other stuff on your system. Um, so that's it. Um, we have a couple of uh, minutes for questions, if there's any questions or not. Questions related to cats are fine as well. Okay. Oh, there's one question there. If scanners are standardized, like I wouldn't say printers are standardized, but this is just one. Way. But okay, um, scanners. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, you could go the other way, maybe. Yeah. I have to look into that. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know. Um, so, any other questions? Nope. Well, I'll, I'll be at the Upbeat booth probably the most of the day. Um, and we have a lot of uh, ground coffee that is really, really good that we are giving away for free. So you can always come and chat with me there. Um, talk about printers and coffee. I love coffee. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much.